Okay, I'm hopefully now streaming. I'm just checking that things aren't on fire here. And they appear to be not on fire, so that's nice. Just saying some words to check that the audio works. Okay, the audio works. We are live. Okay, so, um, hi, I'm David Stark. I'm a indie game developer. I make a game called Airships Conquer the Skies, which is about building steampunk machines that blow up afterwards. And today, uh, I'm gonna make some more weapons for the game. So, um, what's happening overall with the game at the moment is that I'm doing a whole bunch of development work to improve the multiplayer. And this is a lot of work that's just sort of happening in the background and which you don't get to see for a while. So, so you're not completely bored. I'm instead going to do some new modules for the game, which is a much more straightforward process. And in particular, I'm going to make some really big guns. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I've hopefully set everything up correctly here. So... Um, if you have any comments or screaming or whatever, um, just talk to me on the Twitch chat. Or you can also talk to me on um, Discord, actually. I've got both of those up. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's get started. So ages ago, I made uh, this mod, which was like an example mod for the game. And it's a really, really big gun. And people have kept on saying, well, actually, why don't you put this big gun into the game? Because, honestly, it pretty much works. So that's what I'm going to start out with. I'm going to take this big gun and I'm going to put it into the base game. And I'm probably going to do some things to make it look a bit fancier yet. I'd like to redo the graphics for it. But starting out, we pretty much just have to paste the one into the other. So here's the main airship source code, and I just realized that we're in the wrong branch of the main airship source code. Um, Now we're in the right branch. Okay, so um, to add Imperial Cannon, we basically need to add the, um, the file for it. Now the mistake I made when I put the death ray from a mod into the game well, so I gave it the exact same name, which turned out to be a very bad idea because then you get all kinds of weird problems. So I'm just going to rename this to Imp Cannon, uh, which just means that you can still have the original Imperial Cannon mod and it's not going to collide with um, what's there. Then the, uh, going through, the appearance is going to be based on the actual uh, main sprite sheet. Most of these values can stay the same, but I'm going to make it a bit more expensive. Um, then there were two other things I wanted to change. One was that when I made the mod originally, it wasn't possible to change the amount of ammo a weapon uses, but now you can do that. You can make it use more than one unit of ammo per shot. So, I'll just steal that from Aerial Torpedo. There. Logically speaking, it goes here. So yeah, let's make it use two ammunition per clip. Um, oh yeah, and indeed, the weapon appearance. Do these need a source? Yeah, they do. Okay, they all do actually. Oops. Uh, 
Okay. Um, and the other thing which I wanted to change was the muzzle, was the actual speed. I want to make it fly a little bit slower than normal. Um, because it's sort of a big old type of weapon that just chooses, um, just shoots kind of a big um, ball of stone. And yes, indeed, um, there are there is already one weapon that, um, yeah, uh, as you can see. Okay, um, hi Bjornsson. Cool. Um, So let's see what sensible value there will be. What's the normal shot speed? One point nine. Um, so let's give it a shot speed of one point one. Like one point four. So, um, so that's all the basics done. Um, the weapon will now work. Uh, it will just um, not look very good. So other things that we need from the original mod is we need the strings. We um, so it actually has a proper name. Um, find the places where there are all the mod descriptions. Just add that at the end. Then we also have French. It's my terrible French, so I apologize. Any French speakers, please scream now if it's terrible. And German. Okay, so next step is that right now um, this stuff, like what it looks like and so on, um, refers to the completely wrong part of the sprite sheet. So we have to merge the pictures from the, um, from the sprite sheet we've got here, which is this one, into the... Um, into the sprite sheet. So I think it's just this one. Probably. Um, yeah. yeah, that looks pretty up to date to me. It's got uh, planes and stuff like that in there. So we can also open this. Basically grab this whole set of things.
and just sort of uh, plonk it down somewhere for now. Yeah. Um, you also have the bump map, which is irritatingly enough, uh, it's been sort of boiled into one map. We really need the channels of that. Um, I've no idea if there's a way of doing that. But we're going to redo it anyway. So we'll just ignore the fact that we don't have a decent bump map for it. And then basically um, we can just add an offset to everything. An offset of three twenty and five four four. Or in grid tiles. Twenty and thirty four. So let's ex save and export the sprite sheet. Spling. And yeah, now it's basically in. And we can try it out. See, of course, if you have any questions relating to airships development in general, feel free to ask them and I'll do my best to reply. And yeah, I'll probably not stream for that long. Um, I know that a lot of, um, a lot of uh, game dev streamers um, just sort of work on the game and, you know, they've got all of this like weird fancy stuff going on with like all of this integration and so on. I used to watch sometimes the stream for uh, Nuclear Throne when that was going on. I could see that they did this really well. Um, <laughs> but I just tend to talk non-stop. So I hope you find the talking entertaining. It's not going to stop, but it also means I can do this for like an hour um, and then I get really tired. So yeah. Let's see how it goes. So um, now we should be able to go into the ship editor. And let's just pick an existing ship design. There we go. Okay, it somehow didn't grab the language stuff. But the weapon itself is there. Uh, Okay, so here's a question. Uh, will there ever be diplomacy options added to the game? Um, it's a thing I want to look at for the 10.0 update in terms of... Um, uh, yeah, in terms of the work I'm doing there with the... Uh, making the strategic uh, mode more in-depth. So I'm not 
sure yet, but I would like to add some very basic uh, diplomacy options. So, uh, basically, you can have a non-aggression pact, you can have an alliance, stuff like that. So it's not going to be a super involved uh, diplomatic system, but some of these basics. So uh, let's save, save this. And yeah, of course, I know why, why the text isn't showing up. It's because in the text, it's still all referring to Imperial, and I changed it to Imp. It's the danger of copy-pasting stuff. Never do it. Whatever. That was one. Okay, so another question is, uh, might there be random events in the game? Uh, not just Pirates and Hive being set up, but say a random ship being discovered and so on. Um, this is, of course, totally a thing I would like to add. Um, I think I really like it when games do this. I, I really like it in Stellaris or uh, actually Civ Beyond Earth does a pretty good job of that sort of thing as well. Um, I'm just really aware that it's a great time sink. Um, because um, I'm sort of trying to get this game done by, uh, I say, June, and I still have all of these features to throw in. Um, and the thing is that if I make an event system, then, um, well, there's a lot you can do there. It opens up this whole set of possibilities, and you can do a lot of writing, a lot of art, and so on and so on. And so I think the danger is just that uh, it will uh, sort of um, cannibalize the other time. So uh, my current plan for this is yes, I would like to add it, but I think it will go into the second planned expansion. So the current plan with expansions, which as usual is, you know, um, up in the air, um, is that there will be two expansion packs after the game. Um, so when I say expansion pack, what I mean by that is um, there's actual code changes. Like um, there's not just it's not just downloadable content in the sense that I put more stuff in. It's actually you know new features in the game, um, and the uh, the plan for that is that after the game gets released, uh, the first expansion is going to be about um, naval warfare, so ships on the water hopefully submarines and water monsters and stuff like that um and that will cost like five dollars and then the second one is sort of about crew and heroes and stories and stuff like that it's sort of the heroes of might and magic type uh expansion um but with that sort of talking quite long term we know we're talking like 2019 or whenever um yeah so i hope that is a uh, useful answer Okay, so I think I fixed that. Um, yeah, and of course the other thing we want to do is we actually want to try this thing out. So you can see it looks a bit weird because we didn't put in the um, normal map. Um, it just looks really flat because the shading doesn't um, work. But it works. Performance is terrible, um, mostly because um, I'm actually doing this on my partner's laptop. Uh, my laptop, whoops, well, that was very smart of you. My laptop died horribly a little while ago, and um, I'm waiting for it to be repaired. Um, so, performance is a bit questionable. But hey, it worked. Okay, so. Um, the thing that I want to do is I want to basically redo the graphics, or at least update them. So we're going to spend some time with GIMP. And the idea, oops, well, there is, so the Imperial Canon is really patterned, patterned on this lovely beastie. 
that that's the Tsar Canon. It's um, you can see it if you go to Moscow, I believe. I haven't seen it in the metal flesh, and it is, as I understand it, the largest caliber cannon ever actually built. Um, it has an 890 millimeter bore. Um, even even um, the infamous German railway guns, uh, Schwere Gustav and the other one, uh, has a slightly smaller bore than that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty it's a pretty ridiculous gun, and I think it's a great um, thing to pattern on. Uh, but I also like the idea of having giving it kind of a lion head, so I might sort of grab that sort of appearance. But very usefully, I found was pretty much an exactly side on view of the gun, so I can uh, I can use that. Okay. Um, so we're going to go into the graphics. we have got to change this around. So I think I, I put on this sort of eagle-shaped hood ornament, but I actually don't like that so much, so that's going to go. Um, another interesting thing is that the back of the can is actually straight. Um, and I think I'm going to replicate that. Let's just get rid of the checkerboard pattern. There. And then, yeah, the back of it is a little bit wider than the rest. So let's sort of do it like that. Um, and yeah, so the front, I'm going to do like this line head instead. I'm going to try. Um, so we need... Nah. This one, then this, flip horizontally, so the height of this cannon is currently what, 150, the height of the can in game is 16. So it's very convenient. We can basically scale this down by a factor of 10 and it will be the right size. So make it 30. There. Oh God. Can't really see what's going on anymore, but we'll give it a try, shall we? So here, it goes on top of this, it's a temporary layer. Okay, um, let's see what we can do. I mean, most of this is going to be in the in the normal map, right? Uh, you had another question, Johnson? Okay, so... Um, mm, so very sophisticated graphical techniques you can see me using here. Very sophisticated. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Um, so yeah, pretty much everything else has to be happening in the uh, bottom map. So we have the shininess value, which given it's a giant bronze cannon, it should be shiny. That bit's easy. Mm. 
the then we have horizontal lighting um, okay so obviously do the easy bits first so it helps us collect some of the colors we need And then here at the end, okay, that those are all the easy bits. Now we somehow need to make this look like a dragon head, uh, lion head. Um, -la -la. Okay, so that's what it's meant to look like. You can actually see something that's meant to be a nose, for example. So, uh, you yeah, actually think that this layer is actively unhelpful. Yeah, okay. Now, now I can have some idea. Okay. First, first, very rough draft of this mouth. Okay, then it has like a big tooth and a smaller tooth like uh, here. Uh, the Great Army asks, why not bake lightning into the texture? Um, well, uh, if you next time you play the game, if you have a closer look, you will see that, oh yes, the lighting does interact with the bar map. Um, that's why it's separate. Otherwise, yeah, obviously I would just bake it in. Uh, Beyond and I'm afraid I don't understand your question.
Okay, maybe like that. Then we need the eyes, which should be around here. Yeah, I think you will need a lot of work to not look completely stupid, but we're sort of getting somewhere. It's better. I'm probably giving this a little bit bulges out. Just want to have some lighting here. That made a mess. All oh, right, I see, I see what you mean. Um, Okay, uh, so the question is, if you have a turret and it can rotate more than straight up and sort of rotate even towards pointing in the other direction, uh, shouldn't it flip around so it looks right? Actually, I don't think so, uh, because if you think about it, just physically, it wouldn't be flipping around. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that works. Um, arguably, what would be needed, I'm not going to do it because too many other things, is to support for a turret that has a, that can shoot both towards the front, towards the back, but not straight up, and then it should do that. But um, yeah, I'm not going to put in support for multiple discharge firing arcs, as I don't hate myself that much. Um, you know, it's all, it's always these things like uh, individually. It's not it's not a hard thing to do. It's just it's another thing that would need to be added, and uh, it will end up complicating everything a little bit. You do that a um, hundred times, and then your game gets to be a complete pain in the neck. Um, okay, I think we just want to whoops a flatter kind of approach here. Okay, that is arguably not completely terrible, so let's do the vertical. Okay, so this thing is 16 units. Um, Um, question, uh, do I plan to do some game or engine coding in the stream? Um, I think I think I could do that. I usually worry um, 
that uh, it's actually sort of boring to watch me just fiddle around with kind of moving around very rapidly. But I don't know, I could do that again at some point. Um, the Great Albany asks, um, with the bump map, is red completely facing up and no red completely facing down? Um, yes, that's exactly right. So the red channel encodes the vertical and full red means, yeah, that is at pointing up, no red means pointing down. So, so we start out with no red, which is sort of more or less completely pointing down. So that's definitely, that's those regions. Oh yeah, and uh, the colors aren't like continuous because everything's a little pixelated. So uh, there's just five shades. As you can see, there's just really up, up, middle, down and really down. Yeah, I think this might work out. It's always a bit hard to tell, you know, is it, is it going to look okay or not or what, until you've sort of pretty much finished it off. Or often just until you actually get to look at it in game.
yeah, actually, once zoomed out, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, it's looking very jolly. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, <laughs> I think I think having it look kind of disturbingly happy is is actually quite nice. Um, Okay, um, and oh yeah, the other thing which, so I'll do the I'll do this bit afterwards with the um, holding. Um, but what we do want to do is the cannonball again. As a start, as the cannonball is actually a stone cannonball because that's a kind of cannonball that sort of weapon will shoot. So we need. Uh, Stone collar, which is a uh, oh, which one is it? No, this one, I think. Yeah, Bloop. and then we actually need to also do the bumping on this one. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. So the, the way the color values work with the shader, I should explain, is um, that basically it uses the these colors to um, as what's called a normal map. So uh, the colors indicate sort of in which direction a particular surface is pointing and it's using that with information from the light sources to figure out how much something is lit up. So if this cannonball gets shot out of the can, at the start there will be a big light source here from the left because it's been shot out of the can, so that bit of it will be lit up. And that's basically how it works. It makes the game look prettier. Uh, there was another question. Uh, do you think you ever had something like skins or something like the coat of arms? Um, okay, um, so you mean sort of uh, visual variations um, for the um, for the elements in the game? Yeah, actually, I thought about this. Um, I mean, obviously, we doable. You could have kind of different. Um, visual styles you could say like oh i want all my weapons to look like a super super serious so i want them all to have uh, derpy animal faces or something like that um i would definitely as, as someone asked i would definitely not do it with microtransactions um because uh yeah just just now you know um my my idea of how to make games is uh, that you make a game and then you sell it for an amount of money up front and then people have the game. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, something like that at some point in the future. Again, it's one of those, yeah, it would be cool, but it's not going to happen immediately kind of things. Um, yeah. Um, I definitely wouldn't do it as microtransactions. At most, I could imagine doing like a visual visual variations pack for like a dollar. But honestly, like at that point, why bother? Um, I think I would just I would just put it in for free. Um, 
But yeah, it's one of those things where um, it would be sort of fun because I just get to do a lot of pixel art. Uh, but as you can see, this pixel art stuff also takes quite a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's uh, note that, of course, what you can also do as a modder, which is something which I sort of expected more people to do and they haven't, is uh, you can just change the visual style of the game. Uh, you can just replace the main sprite sheet um, and completely make the game look different. So that's something you can do. But of course, then it, it applies across the board. Okay, now we can be conveniently kind of lazy and just... Whoop. No, that was the wrong button. Help. I knew how to do this once. Paste. Layer, transform, flip horizontally. There, and then the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so copy it from here, paste it into vertical. I think you did wrong. Paste it into vertical. Oh. I copied it out of vertical as well. Computers are hard. Okay. Copy out of here. Go into vertical paste. Yeah, yeah, no, it looks all weird and stuff, which is good. There, no. Okay, so that's now set up properly. And the other thing I thought is just to make it look a little bit more detailed is on the shiny channel, we can use extra non shiny colors, which is like this one. Uh, ideally, so if we use the right channel. And we can just overlay like a very faint pattern of sort of details and cracks onto our rock. Wee! Everyone sick yet? Okay, uh, where were we? Here. Yeah, that's frankly enough. Okay. So, let's export the bottom map. Uh, Beyond what you mean the server is on fire? Can you put that into less fanciful language, please? Okay, let's see how that works. Oh yes, yeah, so a uh, question was how is the strategic multiplayer going? Basically, there's now, uh, as you might have seen, there's a alpha 
um, which I'm testing out with a few people. And we're sort of discovering a whole bunch of bugs and misbehaviors and so on. So it will be still quite a long time until strategic multiplayer happens. Because I also want to put in a lot of detail for um, conquest in general. And this all needs to be balanced. Uh, then I need to do um, a bunch of user experience, user interface overhaul stuff on the basis of that. And then um, end of March, beginning of April, I'm constantly traveling around. Um, I'm in. I'm at GDC in uh, San Francisco, end of March, and then beginning of April, I'm at another thing, which I'm not officially meant to disclose yet, but you can probably figure out what that might be. Um, more news on that soon. Okay. So let's see what it looks like now. Ooh. Yeah, okay. That actually, yeah, I quite like that. Look at its ridiculous kitty face. I think it wants to move forward a little bit. Well, that's easily enough done. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Um, so I think it needs moving forward a little bit. I might add a little bit of decorative stuff to it. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the bit which holds it, I think needs, well, obviously it's a bump map. It, I think it also do with some more decoration itself. Whee! And yeah, apologies for the completely potato frame rate. That's just, uh, yeah, potato frame rate. But yeah, I think it looks good. It also looks good on the other ship. There's just this giant cat face sort of going hang. Now, if I make... If I make a round that looks like a fist, I will be physically incapable of not putting a completely not safe for work achievement in there. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was just move the cannon forwards a little bit. Which is a little bit tricky because we need to use we need to edit the right values correctly, but I'm sure we'll manage. Uh, the Great Almany asks, um, could you make the player able to modify a particle size in the mountain settings? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually I could do that. Um, is it is it for reasons of visuals or is it for reasons of performance? Because uh, as far as I know, the particles don't actually impact performance that much. So I worry that people would just, you know, think, oh, oh, this will improve performance and make the particles go away and then the game runs just as badly and uh, looks less nice. Um, so would you like more or fewer particles? Like, would you like to increase the amount of particles further than there were the years? Because, I mean, I can do that. I just don't, I sort of don't want to give people the option of decreasing the particles. And then they think that this will help performance and then they make the game look worse for no good reason. Okay. Um, module type. In canon, oh, that's the called imperial canon. That's fine. Okay, basically we will move the barrel um, back a little bit. Um, we want to move the barrel back. No, uh, back 
forwards by like four pixels which also means we need to move the muzzle center forward by 0 0.25 um, so 0.05 um, conveniently that we can just because the, the game has a mod loading system right um, I can also use that and I can just reload the game data okay Yeah, I think that's better yet. It no longer looks unbalanced. Uh, so another question is, would there be potential in one of the expansions to add more than one ammo type for weapons, or would that be too bulky? So I really think uh, that having multiple ammo types for the same weapon type makes things complicated, because then you need to have a whole interface for being able to switch. Right, um, you need to have this whole thing. Like, let's imagine you have three different weapons which all have two different ammo types, and then you need this whole interface for being able to switch between them. Um, that gets just very involved, um, and for not that big a benefit, I think. Uh, so, I basically I I thought about this before, and I don't want to do it because I think it would just complicate user interface a lot for not that much benefit. So in general, you know, if I feel like, oh, there should be um, weapons that shoot different ammunition, I would just make a separate weapon. And I fully admit that this is unrealistic. In actual naval warfare, there were different types of ammo. So yes, you can do, you should be able to do grape shot and chain shot and blah, blah, blah from the same cannon and what i did instead is that you have a grape shot cannon that's separate to a cannonball cannon which is wrong but it's a i would think it's a convenient simplification okay so yeah that pretty much works um yeah so let's do let's do the rest of the um Let's do the rest of the module. Okay, so um, I think it would be nice to add some gold decoration to this rather boring looking um, thing here um, in fact what I think would be fun so we've got a lion on that cannon now right um, so if we grab was it is it in here no no oh yes it is we can in fact grab the lion arms from here and use that on the can, I think that would be cool. Come on, kitty. Be a good kitty. Yeah, I like that. Obviously flip the kitty. There. I think that looks quite cool, so... Okay, so now I think this needs to be one wider. Okay. Let's put the kitty back on. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I can, I can change the shape of this to be a bit bulkier to better support our kitty.
Uh, right, so Bjorn suggests there could be added abilities, kind of like Shogun 2 does shrapnel shells. You click a button to cancel out the shell, then they fire one round and go back to firing normal shells. I actually like that. So um, activated abilities is like one of the things I would really like to do a lot of in Expansion 2. So the idea there will be that you get uh, you get the the big focus of it is basically you get captains for your ships. Um, so you get a captain. You can assign the captain to a ship, and the captain gives the ship some static bonuses. Like um, usually, usually the command refresh goes faster. That's sort of the standard one. But it might be something like um, the guns are more accurate. You know, There's sort of obvious things like that, or. Like, you know, oh, this guy's just really good at logistics, so now um, you have an extra 30% coal and ammo. Um, but then the idea is that captains would also have activated special abilities. So, yeah, um, having, like, shrapnel or something like that, that could definitely be a thing. Or, like, smoke screen or overload suspendium chambers, all of that sort of... Um, that sort of thing, and the idea is that it sort of be stuff which you can do either do once or like three times in the fight, or whichever cooldown or something like that. So kind of um, almost MOBA-ish kind of abilities. Um, and um, each of them is sort of, you know, kept within bounds. Um, you don't get a huge number of extra buttons because you have your captain and your captain maybe at most has three activated abilities if they're really high level. Um, so. And of course, the kitty needs to be gold colored. Just sort of making it gold encrusted, you know. And yeah, as always with all these things I'm saying, remember, um, this is stuff which I want to put into the game, but this is not stuff I, which I'm enthusiastic about putting into the game, but it's not stuff which already is in the game or is on some fixed development plan or anything like that. So it may not happen, it may happen in the year 2024, or whatever. Um, just always want to add that disclaimer, you know, uh, if you remember the whole No Man's Sky thing, where the, uh, the uh, oh god, what's his name? Uh, the, the No Man's Sky guy, who like went on to all of these interviews and was like, yeah, that would be cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. And it's just had all of, sort of, was just sort of happily fantasizing about all the cool stuff they could add into the game. And it turned out that actually that stuff didn't go into the game. Um, because uh, development time is finite. <laughs>
Yes, exactly. I certainly try to under-promise and over-deliver. But it's always, it's of course always uh, um, a fight because of course, uh, you know, uh, the great thing about promising things to people is that then they get really interested in your game uh, and that's good. You know, that's useful. Uh, the bad thing is that for some reason they eventually want you to actually do those things. Man, that's weird. Does that look like? Uh, okay, that looks terrible. Excellent. Um, yeah, that looks terrible. <laughs> Let's try something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's some specific things which I promised, which I've very hopefully by now made clear aren't going to happen. Um, Diesel was one of them. Um, and. Um, Oh yeah, uh, ground troops. Ground troops aren't happening. If this is new to you, the ground troops aren't happening. I'm so sorry, but uh, yeah, they're not happening. Um, is this even symmetrical? Past David, did it just mess this up entirely? I think past... No, no, okay, no, no maybe. Um... You know, I'm just trying to find a way of making... Making Kitty look less terrible. Oh yeah, land chips. I mean, to be perfectly honest, from a rational development planning perspective, land chips were an incredibly stupid idea um, because um, they actually turned out to be really hard to put in properly. And I mean, you know, the game is labeled airships. Mm, um, they don't, you know, there's no requirement for land ships to be in there but I was just like yeah that's cool we're gonna put it in um, and they're in now and they're fine and all that but um, yeah I'm really struggling this all looks terrible Yes, despite that, I do want to add naval ships. Uh, but this time, I'm. you see, that's the difference. Uh, land ships, I, what I should have done is I should, should have made land ships like expansion number one. Um, it's perfectly reasonable to put them in, but why did I put them into the base game? Uh, that, I think, was my mistake. Ooh, symmetry br brushes, I see, yes. That sounds very useful. Thank you, Dotspot. I will do that, not right now, because that would be boring for everyone, but I will have a look. Now I'm just trying to find a way to make this kitty work. Okay, um, let's try... Again, I'm, I think this shape is too complicated, so let's try completely... Just like that <laughs> yeah the symmetry brushes right they sound useful So if there's something like this, then we have Kitty. The get guess Kitty could really just go into the center. I think that makes more sense. And then we delete this whole thing here. Yeah, I think this is starting to look. No. 
starting to look more like what it should look like. Yeah, that no longer looks completely awful. So, uh, you know, progress is being made. Oh, um, before I finish up, um, if you like me to, I can probably turn on the webcam and you can say hi to my cat. They will hate it and it will be adorable. Okay, and then let's just put some like, um, you know, decorative scroll work type stuff here. Oh, that makes me really happy that you like the live stream. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, the cake. How, okay, the cake. How do you pronounce your name? Is it the cake? The cake, or whatever their name is, has a main coon, which is fantastic. Um, my cats are random cats. They came from a barn. Um, well, they came from, like, a random flat in the suburbs of Zurich um, and they are the offspring of a random cat and some unknown other random cat who was around in the neighborhood okay the cake it is yeah I think that works now um, yes um, so yeah they are just generic cats but they're big and soft and fuzzy as it should be I know you're bringing the turn down and uh Uh, ah, right. okay, this isn't, yeah, of course. Uh, okay, this is slightly annoying. This is actually an odd number of pixels tall, right? Um, I know you can tell. Um, so you can't tell if I remove this one. Okay, I think that works. Now that also needs a little bit of bump mapping. Um, not that much really, but just, uh, you know, oops. The sides. Official stuff plus cat. Ah, yes, yes. They are generic cats. Uh, see you later, the cake. Yes, my cats are pretty generic. I didn't know stuff plus had cats. Just goes to show. Bye. Not sure what it goes to show, but okay. And then, yeah, the shininess component, so we want, like, really shiny. Just going to make the gold bit shiny. Okay, so I 
theoretically speaking, you can do this in a lazy way. Uh, there, step one, step two, color select. Yeah. Okay, maybe the other way around. Color select, followed by rectangle select. Yeah, no. To sect with the current selection. Yes, copy. Get to the shiny. Paste into the shiny. There. Yeah, I've been working on their ships since um, September 2013, so that's nearly five years. Which is mildly scary. I was in my 20s when I started this game. Now I'm, I'm like in my mid thirties. Was I in my twenties? I guess it was just thirty. Um, but yeah, anyway, my point is I'm old. Okay, so let's. I think that's everything that needed doing. I don't think la, no ladders don't usually get shading, so that's okay. Um, yeah. I think that's all done now. So let's re-export the bump map. Yeah, Bjornsson points out that um, he wasn't even an adult when I started the game. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah, there are people who were... I mean, there must be... There must also be some people who, I guess, like, you know, were like... If it takes five years if they're like 13 and then they're like 18 so it's like oh yes i remember this game from my childhood it's done now but i mean that happens that's what happens when you work on the game just by yourself it takes a long time Yeah, that looks nice now. Oh, I also need to do the fragment cheat. I knew there was something. So this is the bit that uh, determines how it breaks into pieces. But remember, barrels don't have... I don't think barrels have fragment cheats. But this needs a fragment cheat. So yeah, people are talking about the rating of the game. Um, I think it did get rated in the Peggy system as Peggy 12. Um, so yeah, I think that's reasonable. I mean, people do die, you know, just not very graphically.
the ongoing joke that basically everyone's made who I... So you know how the... Um, how the game has like uh, this sort of like tentacle um, animation stuff in it uh, for the squid. Um, and of course, um, everyone I've sort of shown the code to has very helpfully explained to me that, well, um, I can always switch to making porn games if the, um, you know, if airships doesn't work out. So who knows? You know, maybe... Um, Maybe uh, next game will be like Zach Collins' Hideous Tentacle Mania 18 Plus. It won't be. I'm still sort of hoping that one day someone will write some erotic fan fiction about the game. Just because that would be hilarious. So like, you know, FYI, um, I'll, you'll make me very happy if you write some incredibly bad erotic fan fiction about the game. Oh yeah, and of course, if you do if you do make erotic fanfic of the game, you do have to upload it to an archive of our own. Um, that's what I really want. I want my own uh, category on uh, Ao3, an archive of our own uh, for Airships Conquer the Skies uh, fanfic. Yes, and obviously because there's no actual characters in the game, it all has to be a uh, fanfic between various modules. Um, or monsters, I guess. I feel like I shouldn't, I shouldn't read out this question because it might get me in trouble. So, uh, yeah. Fragments, I think. There. Okay. So that should be all uh, complete now. That's ah, true, actually. There is one main character in the game. It's Commodore Schwarzkorn, the uh, instructor at the Airship Academy. So uh, you can you can write a erotic fanfic about him and the suspendium chamber. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good now. You can see it in various light conditions. Yeah. So the way the fragments just work is that they're just different regions. Um, ah, it's boarding. That's why it wants to be so close. Um, that there's just different regions of the... Um, of the module that they're getting split into different parts of the um, of the of the whole thing where it explodes. Um, 
So I can actually show you pretty much. I need to run, I need to do this anyway. So this, uh, if you've ever done modding, like this, this really boring bit where it just sort of sits there and calculates a whole bunch of things whenever you change something. And this is what I'm now doing for the whole game. And one of the things it does is that it generates those fragments. So it generates sort of subsidiary sprite sheets um, for what things look like when they're damaged and when they fall apart. And this takes several minutes, so I'm going to see if I can find a cat. And if I can get the webcam to work. Let's press random buttons on the BS. Um, how about video capture device? That sounds promising. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Boing. So I'm just full screening this now, so you can see the cat well, obviously. Uh, I won't leave it like this. Hey, sweetie. Do you want to become famous on the internet? Well, famous. Let's not exaggerate here. Come on. Oh, you big potato. Oh. This is Sinister. It's one of my two cats. He's very annoyed because I woke him up. Say hello to the people, Sinister. Oh yeah, he doesn't speak English. But yeah, he's very beautiful. He's very soft. He's very patient. It's still processing. So let's find the other cat. This is Dexter. He's our other cat. He's Sinister's brother. He's a bit smaller. Hmm? He's also very sleepy. That's why he hasn't tried to escape yet. Why are you thinking about it? Oh no, he's still sleeping. Okay, yeah, okay, there's some other escape struggles. Yeah, if I can show... No, no, okay, now he wants to escape. Bye, sweetie. So, yeah, there's... Uh, that was my nurse. Those were the cats. There we go. Yes, they're called Dexter and Sinister. Left and right. Because, uh... Of reasons of weirdness. Uh, yes, there is a bunch of liquor. Um, I like random weird drinks. I'm actually not drinking very much of them right now, but I like them. So, yeah, we got the cats. Um, yeah, from just a random advert that said, Hey, our cat had kittens. Do you want some? And uh, so we went and visited them and we liked them and we got them. Um, so 
we know the mom was sort of a normal sized calico, the dad was some nice looking boy cat in the neighborhood. Um, and yeah, they've turned out, out to be very pretty and pretty big. Um, one of the cool things is they've got that, uh, the orange and white, but they've got a spiral pattern on the side, not just a, um, not a stripy pattern really, but a spiral. Looks like a caramel ice cream. And yeah, they're both very patient, very sweet cats. Um, when we got them uh, first, they had ticks. And so we spent a lot of time holding them down and uh, removing ticks. And they didn't like that at all. But after a few minutes, they were just like, oh, okay, okay, it's fine. We've completely forgotten that you were horrible to us. So we love you again. Um, so that's really nice. And uh, Dexter is quite a bit smaller because he... Well, he has ongoing health problems and he had uh, pretty bad health problems when he was like a year old where he had problems with his bladder and so on and that started his growth a bit. Otherwise, he would probably be just as much of a giant floof ball as his brother. But now he's pretty much fine. You need to like feed him special food and so on and so on and he's just a bit smaller. But um, he's pretty healthy, I think. And they're both uh, almost four years old. And they have Twitter accounts. We find you the Twitter accounts of the cats. Yes, and I mean, if for some reason you're not aware of it, um, that's my Twitter account. I'm still doing this calculation um, because it's having to go over all of the graphics in the game. Crossly surprised that there isn't a cat monster. Well, I like cats, so why would I make a cat monster? To be fair, I kind of like squid too. So, yes. Um... Well, we're still sort of waiting for all of this stuff to happen, and then I will show you the final result. Um, and then I'll probably stop streaming for now. Um, so the big cannon is one of the modules that gets put into, will get put into the next update. I also plan to do a big flamethrower and a big rocket. They will all be fancy looking, a very big, and sort of on the boundary line between okay awesome but also really expensive um so because i don't want to accidentally make some kind of super gown that is then really dominant in the in the uh, kind of meta so um the big rocket will be yeah okay it does a huge amount of damage but like all rockets it's going to be pretty inaccurate and it eats ammo like mad um, and the, the big flamethrower, well, I mean, sure, it does a lot of damage, but again, you need to constantly feed it more ammo, and also it's still a flamethrower, you still need to go into position, it still has a limited range. Um, yeah. Uh, Bjornsson asks, uh, did I ever play Alpha Centauri? Did I ever play Alpha Centauri? I have played a lot of Alpha Centauri. Um, I've actually tried um, twice to stream playing Alpha Centauri, but it always got horribly messed up um, with the video and uh, with the audio and everything. It somehow it doesn't play nice with OBS at all. Um, but yeah, totally. Um... I have played a lot of Alpha Centauri. Um, 
my um, oh, here's another question. How often do I do these streams? Well, um, I did them somewhat semi-regularly about a year ago, and then I stopped for a while. But I actually really enjoyed this one, so I'm going to try and do them, you know, more frequently again. I'm not going to do some kind of regular schedule or anything like that, but there will usually be at some point during the Swiss daytime, and yeah, like an hour, an hour and a half long, something like that. And I'm also going to do my best to worst and afterwards take the stream and put it on YouTube so you can watch it there if you miss it. Uh, yeah, so Alpha Centauri. Um, Oh wow, we own some new play believers. I always play the human hive. Um, the the human hive is um, um, has this uh, almost undocumented ability that makes them kind of broken, which is that their efficiency rating can't go below zero. And that means you can just choose all of those things that would usually be a disaster. You know, you can choose police state, you can choose a planned economy, and you're still at zero efficiency, which is okay. And so you just, you know, you beeline to uh, planned police state and planned economy, and then, ha ha, you get a huge amount of production and growth and so on, and you have extra defense, and then you just sort of turtle. And grow a lot, and then you win. Oh, and uh, because you've got high police rating, you can spend. It doesn't matter so much that you have low efficiency because you can spend all of your energy on actually useful things rather than on like nice things for your people. You know, we need that. So yeah, I really, I really love Alpha Centauri. I originally really hated Beyond Earth. Because, I mean, I wanted, you know, I wanted Alpha Centauri 2. I wanted the same game, but better. And Beyond Earth is not Alpha Centauri 2. Beyond Earth is Civilization 5 in space. And if you treat it as Civilization 5 in space, it's actually really good. Um, you need the expansion pack. You do absolutely need that. But if you get the expansion pack... And uh, you really think of it not of Alpha Centauri, but it's just like a mutant version of C5. If you like C5, you will like uh, Beyond Earth. And I've been playing it a bunch under these conditions, and it's actually fun. But no, it's no Alpha Centauri. Um, it's um, worlds apart. And I don't... I don't really think that a, how should I say this, true sequel to Alpha Centauri will happen anytime soon, or from Firaxis, um, because I I think the like one of the things that was cool about Alpha Centauri was that they really did the homework. Uh, you know, famously, there's a reading list at the back of the. Um, at the back of the manual, which I still have. Um, by Dotspot. And um, you know, they really did their homework. They really created these interesting characters, these interesting factions, which had genuine ideological disagreements. Uh, they created this alien world, which was perhaps not the most detailed one or whatever, but he had some ongoing kind of thing. And um, Beyond Earth, on the other hand, is more just sort of a big pot of generic sci-fi trips um, with a whole bunch of sort of for forgettable characters. Okay, I mean, you know, you get to know the faction, it's okay, but like, uh, you know, uh, pretty much all of the factions in the... Um, like, like in Alpha Centauri, the factions are super political. You know, you've got like space North Korea and you've got like space environmentalists and all of that sort of stuff, you know. And in Beyond Earth, they're all sort of middle of the road neoliberals of some stripe, 
you know, it's all sort of end of history type stuff. Um, and that's kind of boring, you know. I would like them to have, like, proper fights about this. But hey, this is taking forever. Um, I can just keep talking about Alpha Centauri forever. <laughs> but uh, maybe that's boring, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm used to um, running this process on my actual development machine. Uh, whereas, yeah, this is my partner's laptop and it's quite a few years old. And so I think it's just sort of screaming and struggling desperately. Um, yeah. One, um, one faction... Oh yeah, let me know if there's audio cutouts, obviously. Um, let me know if there's anything wrong with the stream. Yeah, the fact that the delay is really bad, that's just how it seems to be with Twitch. Um, it's that's that's one of the things I find really frustrating about it. That's why I sometimes use uh, try to use YouTube Gaming because maybe that has a better delay, but they're not really. But it does make um, interacting with people really disjointed. I feel like if if there was a streaming site that could actually properly solve this delay thing and get it down to like. A second or something, which theoretically should be doable. Um, that would be nice, but yeah. Twitch is this huge delay. So, continuing to talk about Alpha Centauri. Um, you know, you could create custom factions uh, with some hacking. And uh, one custom faction, which I always sort of like the idea of, is uh, actually merging uh, the the Lord's Believers and uh, the Morganites and have a uh, faction that believes in the prosperity gospel. So they're Christians, but they're also rabid capitalists who believe that uh, if you do the right thing, you get really rich. Which is A, a real thing, and B, a sort of an interesting combination of um, stats, you know. And yeah, the prosperity gospel is a real thing. Uh, you can look it up. Um, I'm not going to, you know, comment on the validity of that belief, but it is an existing belief. Yeah, and I mean, with uh, airships, coming back to that, I uh, very intentionally, you know, there's religion in the... In the setting, because I mean, yeah, okay, there is, uh, but I sort of intentionally created this like trilunar religion to be sort of uh, kind of looking a bit like Christianity or Islam or something like that without actually being a specific religion or an obvious uh, clone of a specific religion. Um, so it's more about the kind of social effects of it, you know, people go to some kind of church and they have some kind of beliefs and, you know, hence you can have people who are heretics and so on. I believe the official um, TV trope's name for this trope is Crystal Dragon Jesus. Airships does have a TV tropes page, for which I'm really happy. Um, I really felt like, okay, I've arrived, I've become realised as a game developer when I saw that, yeah, okay, my game is now on TV tropes. Right, this is really good, taking strictly forever. 
<laughs> Bjornsson points out that we've gone from game design to porn to religion. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, what can I say? I don't have good media training. Uh, I wanted to show you a thing. Oh, yeah, um, I was looking for giant Chinese rockets and I found this thing, which was like a genuine war thingy um, in China. It's like a rocket with secondary rockets attached to it. Um, it's which is pretty cool. Um, Yeah, but of course, uh, unlike in the game, uh, what these rockets don't do is they don't explode. So um, they don't actually um, work in the same way. Ha, huh. you can put in a uh, Racha. Um, that could be an interesting module. Someone can mod it in. You know that? Um, let me find the... Can we create a new window, please? Yep. Uh, like something like that, yeah. Okay, put the apostrophe in the wrong place. Which is like this thing. Yep. Just have like huge numbers of, um, well, basically arrows being propelled by rockets. It's sort of a more DACA approach to um, weapons. <gasps> it finished! Okay, that took 21 minutes. It takes like it takes like four minutes on my other computer. Okay, so note to self, don't just like do that um, because it takes forever. Okay, and now we know. We know not to do this. Uh, yeah, so I can just show you. If we now go into... Um, God, um, sprite sheet fragments. There, this is very hard to see. There, let's put a layer below it of like. Right. So yeah, now you can see this is just all of the all of the various bits of the modules and how they've been torn apart. So here's like some you know some boiler from like the legs or um, some fragments of a um, of suspendium or of a electrical generator and so on and so on. Like this does all of this tearing apart because it would be incredibly boring to do it manually. Um, so it doesn't do it manually, and it lays it out, and it writes a big data file, and then the game can load it back in, and so on. So yeah, okay, it takes 20 minutes, but uh, can you imagine how long it would take to draw this? Longer than 20 minutes. So this is still a time saving. Okay, so let's go back into the game. Um, also, let's... I know what I'm doing. There. So let's launch the game one more time.
Okay, it wants call to speed. Nice. And I can use, uh, I think I've got a debug tool to do damage to stuff. So I can just make this explode. And now you can see all of those fragments that we defined earlier falling away. So that's what that's for. They're landing and exploding. Uh, the Great Albany asks, who did the art for the pop-ups in battle? And I can answer this. It's a artist called uh, Karina. And I will just find you. This is her um, DeviantArt account. So yeah. she's done all the character art in the game and also the art for like uh, monster nests and things like that. And she's gonna do a whole bunch more art for it. So that's cool. Okay, um, I think that is all for now. Um, Jonsson uh, mentioned that uh, doesn't the game doesn't run so well on the high resolution monitor. Um, note that um, if you have performance issues, I'm always quite happy to talk to you and to use you as a guinea pig for uh, figuring out how to improve the performance. It just involves a lot of uh, running test builds on your machine. But if you're interested in doing that, do get in touch. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching. I will... Um, when I next do this, I will communicate via Twitter and via um, Discord and so on. Uh, so if you'll get to catch it. And if not, it's on my YouTube channel. Okay. I'm going to press some buttons on OBS to make the stream stop.